Greetings from Pastor. He sent a message. I didn't say how they were doing, but I think they're doing okay. So probably a bit wet, and um, probably hopefully they brought a good book along <laughs> to where they're at, because I don't think they have too many outside activities and everything. But it just asked me to remind you of um, the things on the the weekend um, on Saturday morning, um, nine o'clock uh, track distribution. At 7.30, uh, we're going to go out for breakfast, those who want to. Um, we're going to go to Love a Coffee, and so if you want to meet us there, Love a Coffee is just behind Coles down here, just on the other side there. You kind of go in the back car park, you'll see it there. But it's a nice little restaurant, good little breakfast and everything, so if you want to come along for that, we're going to meet for breakfast there and then come up afterwards and uh, do some track distribution. So I want you to be doing that. Um, we'll do prayer requests afterwards, but I just wanted to remind you, uh, let you know, uh, some of you already, we've told you already, but Brother Marsh is very sick. Those of you who know Pastor Marsh, he's very sick. He's in um, the new hospital up at uh, Kiwana. Um, he's in ICU and seems to be having some serious heart trouble. So um, just ask you to be praying for him and lifting him up and got a call from Mike Jr., um, on the way into church tonight, asking us specifically to pray. So um, certainly I know you'll do that and lift him up for the Lord. So looking at um, what uh, pastor's been teaching on Wednesday nights with Proverbs, the one thing I find with Proverbs, the problem is that you read Proverbs all the time and boy, you get under conviction of sin. And, you know, it's a real problem because you have to deal with all these things in your life. And looking at the opportunities that we have as Christians, how do we deal with this? And so I want to take you over to Hebrews. You got your Bibles open to the book of Hebrews tonight. And we're going to take a look at that because um, it's one thing to know that I have sin in my life, but I don't know about you, but how many people here have a battle with sin? Anybody here? Oh, there are good, a good few of you. Okay. Anybody not have a battle with sin? Okay, so that's good to know that you all are fighting the good fight. But do you ever feel like uh, sin is winning? You know, the, the, yeah, yeah, that's the problem, you know. Uh, we're, I'm fighting against sin, but sin seems to be defeating me. In Hebrews 11, it talks about faith and trusting God and gives us all these people that were great in exploits and how they, you know, they resisted against and they fought and they, they believed God and by faith they did this and by faith they did that. But I think he tells us the extra part of it in chapter 12. So I want you to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Because he's going to tell us, after telling us of all those great victories of people and how they uh, had great faith, he came to chapter 12 and gives us a key to spiritual victory. So I want to give you uh, some keys to spiritual victory tonight here. I, I want to give you something that quite hopefully will be quite practical in that. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet uh, resisted unto blood striving against sin. So, I want to take us through this little passage here because I think it has some critical keys for each of us on how to have spiritual victory. Um, how hard do you work against sin? Now, we all admitted that we battle against sin, uh, but I think sometimes our idea of battle is like getting in the boxing ring with Mike Tyson. All we do is cover up and go, oh no, you know, and in Sin gets us and beats us up, and it's kind of like, can I survive this? 
but we don't take anything, uh, we don't throw any punches against sin. It just throws the punches against us. And we, we're kind of getting beat up all over it. What is um, your nature? Let me ask you, what is your nature? What were you born with? A sin nature, right? So what, is, what do you do naturally? Sin. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to be taught how to do it. Uh, boys, ha has, has your mother taught you how to sin, or did you just figure it out by yourself? Awesome. By yourself? All by yourself, Ash? Yeah, really? You didn't ha she didn't sit down and train you and teach you day after day so you'd finally get it? No, you just did it naturally. You know what? Sin is natural. And we do it naturally. So if we're going to not sin, we're going to have to defy nature. We're going to have to do something. You say, well, how do I defy nature? I'm glad you asked. I'll tell you, okay? So if you do nothing, you will fail. You'll continue sinning, won't you? So you come along and say, boy, pastor told, and he, boy, and I, I'm a sinner and I did this and everything. But what did you do about it? If you do nothing, you will continue to follow that same path. You will continue to do that. What was Paul telling us here in Hebrews? And I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, as is obvious, okay, for those theologians. Okay, we are, number one, we are being watched. Now, there, he says, there is a great cloud of witnesses. Now, those are probably those who have died and gone on before. There are angels watching. They say the angels peer in, look at. Um, when you sin, somebody sees. And I got a feeling the Lord sees, right? So you've got a witnesses. So you say, oh, man, if I, <laughs> nobody knows my sin. <laughs> oh, really? Did you just read that verse? Read verse 1 again. What does it say? Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. I mean, this isn't just a couple people seeing. There is a great cloud of people watching. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. He says, since everybody's watching, and there, not only is it the people here watching you, but angelic beings, lost, uh, dead loved ones in Christ, They're Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the whole Trinity's watching, everybody's watching you. So how are you doing? You go, oops, I didn't realize it was that public. Well, it is, okay, it is. Uh, but So there's a lot of witnesses. Number two, we are to actively lay aside the weights and sins. Okay. There are things that are weights, things that slow us down. I used to run track and field. I wasn't any good, but I did it, okay? I used to run hurdles, and I tripped over a lot of them. I've got the scars on my legs to show it. But you know what? The worst thing, well, actually what we did is we trained with these little ankle weights. Because if you trained with those, then when it came time to run, man, you were light on your feet, man. You felt like you were flying. You were so light. We've got to lay aside the weights. And there are weights in our lives and there are sins in our lives. There's some things that aren't sin, but they're going to keep you from having spiritual victory. they are going to be things that are going to slow you down. And so we're commanded to lay those aside. So let me ask you, can you stop sinning if you want to? It appears that you can now, can you be sinlessly perfect? I don't think so. I think you can be, I don't think you can be sinless, but I think you can sin less. Okay? So we can get there. So, now, the question is, do you want to? You won't lay it aside if you don't want to. You have to say, I really want to get there. I don't want to have the burden of a weight in sin. Because those are the things that stop you from having joy in your life. 
These, these are the easy ones that uh, set us aside. They keep us from being victorious. These are the things that hold us back from running the race properly. These are things, I mean, uh, my son just did the Kokoda Trail. <laughs> he got over there and there were 13 of them. And he said, I'm going to carry my own pack. Only one other guy decided to carry his pack. That's when he began to think maybe that wasn't a good idea. Because that's 22 or 23 kilos. And it's up and down and up and down. Literally about that steep too. And he said, my shoulders got sore. My back got sore. I fell over. Uh, it, it was hard work. That's why you hire a porter to carry your bag for you. Because it, it is hard work. And you know what? It is hard work carrying your sin everywhere you go. It's going to be hard work to get victory if you're always trying to carry around your sin and you're always trying to deal with it. So God wants us to have victory. God doesn't want us to have to be fighting it. He said, lay it aside. You know, a wonderful thing, when you lay it aside, the only way you get it back is to pick it up. But if it's laid aside, it's aside. It's not like, well, I'll lighten the load a bit. No, you got to get rid of it. Well, let's, let's see how we can get rid of it. It doesn't take much to get us off track. And it's natural for us to want to fall into that snare. We have to put to run the race, not from the lounge chair or from the pew, but we need to run it, uh, you know, we need to run it from a running position. You can't run a race sitting where you're at. You can't run a race without working at and training at it and doing uh, the training that's needed. Before they went on the Kokoda Trail, they ran up and down the Glasshouse Mountains. <clears throat> Almost every day they trained doing that. They were glad they did because it was hard work going on the trail. How many like to run? How many run daily? Now, I've got a daughter-in-law that runs marathons. She's nuts. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of sweat. It takes a lot of pain. And it takes a lot of tennis shoes. <laughs> yeah. it, it's hard work. I don't know about you. Now, you know what? I don't like to run. <laughs> I don't like to run. Uh, you know, I, it, it hurts. It hurts. But we're commanded to run the race. It, and I got news for you. If you're going to run the race, you're going to pay a price to run it. It's not, hey, hey, she just ran the Paris Marathon. You know what she does? She gets up at 4 o'clock every morning, drives to Brisbane, and runs for two hours. And then goes to work. She pays a price to get there. Now, if you want to have spiritual victory, and we all do, don't we? There's going to be a Commonwealth Games here. You can all go down there and have victory. But how do you get there? It's like the old saying. The guy got, got to New York and he says, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? You know, the famous place where you play the piano and famous musicians go. He said, the way you get to Carnegie Hall is practice, practice, practice. You, the way you have spiritual victory is practice, practice, practice. You've got to work at it. It's not going to come just because you wish it would. Wishing, hoping, and maybe, and doesn't get it there. It doesn't cut it, okay? Spiritual victory uh, is not easy. It takes effort and discipline. That's why we are called disciples. Why do you think you're called a disciple? Because there's discipline involved in becoming that. So you say, Pastor, Brother Carver, it's sounding more and more like work here. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, and it's going to get harder, okay? Let us look unto Jesus, okay? So it says in verse 2, it says, now I want you to look at Jesus. We've got a great example. We look to him for salvation. We look to him for spiritual victory. Who? What did he do? Well, his example and his practice teaches us what it does. He did not take the easy way, though he could have, he could have gone there, but he could have called 10,000 angels, but he didn't. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. 
So why did he do it? Why do you want spiritual victory? Because let me guarantee you this. The one way to have joy in your life is to have victory over sin. People, you know, they, they compete in all these sporting events, and when are they say, I, this is the happiest day of my life. Oh, you know, they try to ha they try have happiness because it's about a happening. We can have joy because joy isn't based on happenings. It's based on a relationship. And we can have victory. You want to have joy in your life? You want to have joy? You know what? When sin no longer has a hold on you, you'll be happy as a pig in mud. You're going to be really happy. And God wants us to have the victory. But notice Jesus did it for the joy that was set before him. What was the joy of that? Salvation for you and me. Salvation for us. Obeying the Father and, and pleasing the Father. Those were all things. Now we can have joy here and we can have joy in heaven. There's going to be rewards in heaven. But I'll guarantee you when you have spiritual victory here, you'll have joy as well. So you want to have a joyous life? Here's the key. Here's the key. Watch it. We're going to give it to you tonight. Count it all joy. It says when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? <laughs> because when you have victory over the temptations, you're joyous. Right? You get tempted and you don't fall for it like you always have before? Yes. I won the victory. Won the victory. And the victory is there. Victory over temptation is always joyous for the believer. A victory is when we defeat an enemy. And what is your enemy? Satan. Satan and sin. That's right. Both of you are right. The person is Satan and the act is sin. Folks, we can have victory and we can have victory over it. It's not your friend. It's not somebody you buddy up to. It's not something you excuse or give reason for, it's something you go on. You got to get down and dirty to defeat the devil. You cannot just ease into it. You got to go for it. The devil isn't going to play fair. He's not going to play even. He's mean, nasty, and he's a cheater. Okay? He does everything to get you. First thing you have to do is you need to be ashamed of sin. You need to hate sin. You need to be willing to name your sin. You need to say, this is my sin problem. If I asked you right now, could you give me five sins and weights that you carry around, that you battle with? Can you do it? First of all, it should be no problem at all. The thing is, the only reason it's a problem is because you're trying to hide it. That's what, exactly what the devil wants you to do. You say, oh no, I don't have any problems. Huh, I'm okay. It doesn't bother me. I had a guy one time tell me. He says, you know, I don't have any problem with uh, temptation with ladies and things like this. Guess what? He had an affair and left his wife. That's right, yeah. Remember, think, he that thinketh he stand, take heed lest he fall. Watch out. In fact, you know what? You find that most of the great men of God in the Bible fell in that which it appeared to be their strongest. Abraham was a man of faith, and he didn't believe God when God said, you're going to have a son. <laughs> You know, uh, you go down. Moses was the meekest man that ever lived, yet what happened? He lost his temper. Struck the rock. Didn't get to go in the promised land. David was a man after God's own heart, yet had a man murdered and um, uh, committed adultery. Whoa. Why? Watch out. Just the time you think you're doing pretty good. The devil's going to get in there. So first of all, you've got to be willing to admit and know what you are weak in. Where's your weight and where are your sins? We are ashamed to admit that we are sinners sometimes. And we, until we are honest with ourselves and honest with God and honest with others, we'll not get victory. Victory will have its reward. 
now and later. So don't forget um, how Jesus uh, strived against sin and sinners, okay? This will encourage you to know that your Lord knows exactly what you're going through. In verse 4, it says, how hard do you work at this, say, this saying here? How, how hard do you deal with this? Elroy, can you help me? Could I get you to hand those out right there? Hand out one sheet to everybody. Anybody a really bad sinner here? You can give them two. Okay, all right. <laughs> the really bad sinners need two sheets, okay? I'm, I'm going to give you something here. And because uh, I want to help you, uh, and the Lord wants to help you tonight. We uh, talk to him, and, he, and he, wants to, he wants you to have victory. He wants you to have something to hang on to. This is something you can take, you can fill it in, you can put it in a dark envelope and hide it, or you can, if, if the sins are too embarrassing, uh, or you can put it in your Bible and keep it in, in there and, and pray over these, because I've got something just, so. So we got enough for everybody there. Because I want you to take a look at it and see what God wants it. See, in verse 4 there, it says that ye have not yet strived against, uh, unto, against sin unto blood. He said, he said, you haven't gone that far. In fact, most of us haven't even got a little slight paper cut from it. Unless you just cut yourself on the paper. All right, okay. We, we have, you know, we think, man, yeah, I'm fighting the devil. Uh, I don't think you could call what you're doing fighting. I think you just know about him, <laughs> okay? It, folks, if we're going to fight, we have to put on the whole armor of God. And what is the weapon of warfare? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, okay? So we're going to take the Word. Now, if you've got a pen... You can start right now, okay? But what we're going to look at, Psalm 119, verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not... Okay, so let me ask, you got any, did you run out? Do you still need, okay, somebody has two. We'll, we'll get you more if you need them, okay. Okay, there's more here, okay. So... If you're going to fight against sin, it's going to have to be with the right weapon. You know, it's like the guy says, yeah, you know, the guy that came to a gunfight brought a knife to a gunfight. It doesn't work. You've got to go with the right weapon if you're going to <laughs> defeat the right enemy. Would you agree with that? Okay, so what is the right weapon? The word, the word of God. What did Jesus use when he was tempted three times? The word of God. So if it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for us, okay? It, 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 will, it should work for us, too, okay? I mean, he gave us all the examples. He shows you that he did it. He worked against it. Will you do this? Do you really want to get rid of your sin? Do you really want to have victory over it? Or are you just playing games? Pastor Lord, one si a fellow pastor in Florida said one time, he says, what we do from Monday to Friday is what we really believe. All the rest is just religious talk. You know, we can talk a good talk, but the reality is, what do you do day by day? So you're really going to fight against sin? I'm going to give you the way to do it. It's going to take some work. Not as hard as you think, but it's going to take some work. It's not just going to happen because you wish it would. All right, here we go. Okay, let's be bold and name our sin. So... We've got weights and sins. Now, you can put them down one side or the other side. You may put them on one sheet, another sheet. You may have to have a notebook to hold them all. I don't know. That's up to you. That's how, uh, it depends upon how big a battle you want to get in with the devil. All right? So, you pick one. Anger. Okay? How, 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 give me this. Let's, get, let's go for some sins, first of all. They're easy to figure out. Okay? Name some sins that people have battles with. This may be not be yours because you don't want to tell everybody that you're a sinner, right? Why don't you tell them? Okay, what is it? Worry. Worry, okay, worry. 
worry is what? It, it's faithlessness, isn't it? Yeah. Worry. Yeah. Now, okay, so write down worry. Okay, if that's one of yours. How many people worry here? So you're not alone. Okay, okay. Number two, number two. Somebody got another one. Okay. Go ahead. Who has another one? Just speak it up. I can't hardly see your hands. There you go, Ash. Stealing? Okay. You you know, you say, oh, I don't steal. At least I don't steal. Yeah, how about, how about the tithe? How about the tithe? Well, the man robbed God, yet he have robbed me. Mm. Whoops. Oh. You know, hey, hey, we can go through all the Ten Commandments, and I can prove to you that you've committed every one of those. <laughs> Swearing? You say, I don't use bad language. Oh, really? You mean you don't substitute words? And you don't think in your heart? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he? Oh, okay. Uh, do you always put the Lord first? Or do you put things first? Thou shalt have no other gods before him. You say, I don't have a Buddha in my house. Yeah, but you got a nice car. Or you have a nice phone. Or you have a nice chocolate bar, yeah. Hey, hey, it doesn't have to be big to be a god. Anything you put above the Lord is an idol. Right? Okay. So, okay. Got another, anybody else? Another sin you want to share? Come on. Pride? Pride? Yeah, pride. Ooh. Pride. Let, let, let's stop with pride. Okay, now you got pride written down. Anybody else pride? proud around here? Okay, I'll help you with that one. Okay. Okay, you got pride. Okay. Give me a, now what I want you to do under each of these is you got ten things there. You know what those ten things are? They're ten Bible verses. Because it said, if thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Well, it's one thing to say, my sin is pride. I challenge you to get ten verses on any of your sins or your weights. And then take those verses and hide them in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. And all of a sudden, every time the pride comes up, and pride cometh before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Whoa, that's a good one. Pride, isn't it? And every time pastor, you know, pastor will be preaching, and you got your list there, and God will give you another one. He'll give you another verse. You say, oh, where was that one over oh, there? Uh, that's another verse I've got to memorize. And boy, I've got to fight the good fight. i got to, you know what? I will, I can almost guarantee you that if you will memorize 10 verses on your sin, you'll have victory over it. It's just hard to do it. You start to get angry, and it says, Be ye angry and sin not. Yes. You know, and boy, it, it, oh my. All of a sudden, every time you start to do your, the sin starts to rise up within the flesh. The flesh is warring against the spirit, but see, my spirit has the word of God in it. Got it. And you've all of a sudden given the sword of the spirit of the word of God the ability to give you victory over your sin. God wants to give you victory over your sin. This is not a hard thing to do, but if you're going to have victory, you're going to have to train, you're going to have to get in the trenches, you're going to have to start fighting. Ye have not resisted unto blood. I'm not even asking you to go to blood. I'm just asking you to hide his word in his heart so you have some victory. Because I want you to have the joy of the Lord as your strength. So I hope this. I hope you'll do something about it. it it's not going to happen because you wish it would. It'll happen because you do something about it. So I challenge you to write down those things, those sins that do so easily beset us, and then run the good race. Run with patience the race that is set before us. And get in training. Put the Bible verses down. Memorize them. Hide them in your heart that you might not sin against the Lord. Wouldn't it be great to be freed from the bondage of sin? God can give you victory. He wants to. He wants to do it tonight. So I'll let you go ahead and work on that. And.
That, that's something for you to work on. Start building your list. Start getting the verses. Find the verses that mean something to you, that really help you see what God's heart is about your weight and your sins. Write them down, and God will give you the victory. He promised he would. He gave us it. Here's the example. Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. God wouldn't ask you to do that if you couldn't. Right? right. He's given you all the He's given you the weapon. He's given you the ability. Just gotta apply it. All right.